ice cream lover, Steve Christensen is my name. Welcome to this episode uh, of, um, what do we even call this now? We used to call it a podcast. I don't like the word vlog. Welcome to this video. Nice to have you here. We are broadcasting from St. Louis, Missouri, Scoop School. Look, we're in the classroom today. We like to mix it up a little bit so far as location, filming locations are concerned. I do want to thank our episode sponsor for this video, which is iRice & Co. Manufacturers of water ice base, hot fudge, hot caramel, uh, ice cream bases, shake bases, all sorts of toppings. iRiceCo.com, the link is down below. Cost you nothing to have a little bit of a look-see. I want to touch a little bit on food cost today. And the question that we get all the time is uh, what my cap should be, what my goal should be. And with food cost percentage, you're always trying to get that as low as it can possibly be, but without sacrificing quality of product. But that doesn't apply to individual menu items. Why don't you come over here with me? These are uh, the menu boards that we had on our stores uh, in St. Louis uh, a few years back. To give you an example of, if you are just opening your business and you don't have any kind of uh, record of sales or sales period, it's hard to kind of know what the average item um, or what your average food cost is going to be because really your food cost should be calculated over a period of time rather than at one point in time or an individual item item. So let's kind of give you an example. You've got your standard ice cream cone. It's probably the, the most inexpensive thing that you can make on your menu. Let's say we've got a number 30 joy cone here. We've got five or six ounces of vanilla ice cream or soft serve or custard. Now that may sit somewhere at about a 17% food cost. How do we calculate that? Well, we figure out what this cone costs us to make, not including labor. So I'm talking about cone, ice cream mix, maybe a bit of vanilla in there, the napkin that goes around it. That is your food cost. You divide that food cost by what you're selling it for. In this case, uh, $2.20. Again, a little bit while ago, so prices aren't current. But in this scenario, let's say uh, this costs us 22 cents. We're selling it for $2.20. You do the math and you've got a certain percentage food cost. That's how you figure out your food cost percentage per item. But when we talk about this process of food cost and what your food cost should be, again, we try and cap it out at 30%. That's not per item, that's an average of your sales or an average of your food cost. Because if we come all the way over here, just walking down menu row, walking along, Let's take a banana split. So a banana split here may have a 38% food cost. More expensive to make, you've got a more expensive container here. Banana, three scoops. Some places will have uh, strawberry, pineapple, chocolate, three dollops of whipped cream, a cherry, uh, spoon, napkin. And that's a much higher food cost. It's costing you more to make something like that. So the food cost percentage uh, is maybe higher, it might be 30 38%. But in the grand scheme of things, you're selling a lot more cones than you are banana splits. That's where the average comes from. So when we talk about, again, your average food cost or your food cost percentage, we're generally talking about the average and not per individual item. The quandary is you only get to know what your average food cost is by costing out every one of these items uh, in order to see what they cost, figuring out what you're selling them for, and then determining determining what that ratio is. And now that it's winding up at the end of the season, might be a good time to sit down and kind of go through some of those invoices, see exactly what your banana boats or your SD12 Sunday cups or maybe your 16 ounce um, shake cups are actually costing you. Go through and put them into a spreadsheet and figure out, okay, this is what it's costing us. This is what we're selling
selling it for, get your product food cost percentage, and then average that out over the entire menu, or look at a sales period where you can kind of figure out, this is the revenue we got, this is what we spent on food and paper combined, uh, and you'll get your average food cost. So again, uh, people get a little bit confused, and it can be a bit confusing. When we talk about a 30% food cost or lower, we're talking about the average of your menu, not individual products. Look, I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my mind, uh, but this is what we do every single day. We help people become successful in the ice cream business. If you have any questions, just pop them down below. Why don't you just pop them down below? Because we love to help people uh, in their uh, questions and quandaries of the ice cream business. While you're down there below typing away, if you have a topic or a question uh, or something that we can help you with, put that in there as well. We'll put it in a video for you. Look, you may not have iRI sponsoring that video. It might be one of our other great sponsors, but iRI did sponsor this video. So again, their link is down below. And uh, look, that's about all we have for this video. As we always say at the end, keep on scooping. See you in the next one.